It's almost 2025, and if there's one thing that's consistent among developers, it's creating new languages that are that kind of go something like C, but easy, or C, but modern, or C, but for furries. But this time we have a language designed to be used with AIs. That's right, it's gonna be C, but for AI and furries. Obviously, AI is gonna take all of our jobs the moment that product managers can accurately describe what they want, which means our jobs are effectively safe ad infinitum. But there is a, a room for us to be able to take advantage of the AI, you know, the classic AI experience that we all have, where we tell the AI that it's a mother's proud of it, glaze it really hard, or threaten to commit Sudoku if it doesn't give you back JSON. And yes, that still is true when it comes to Anthropic right now, I cannot get properly formatted JSON. Anyways, this new language is called Mirror, and it's kind of unique, right? It has this, this basic grammar that proposes signatures, which is kind of what the function name and shape should be, and then examples. So kind of like test-driven development where you don't write tests, you just write like the black box version of it. That's right. That means it's an AI-powered, functional peer experience in JavaScript, of course, produces JavaScript. I mean, what other language would have produced it? Only produces JavaScript. That means you get all the benefit of avoiding writing code, plus you get all the agony of writing tests. It's late stage TDD, really. That's what it is. We're, we're, we've officially hit late stage. AI powered test driven development. And if a VC ends up seeing this video, pretty sure Mir's in in store for about a ten million dollar funding. Because let's let's just be real here, AI. That's all you gotta say. That's actually all you have to say to a VC and you you get millions of dollars. I mean, look at Fred.com. Anyways, I played with Mir for about two hours in hopes of making something, really anything, just like, can I even create the simplest function? But as I started playing with it, I realized several things. One, <laughs> it does appear that an AI has written this language because the specification is actually insane. Look at this, literals. Literals is one literal and an optional zero or more literals. What syntax is that? I don't know, but you eventually kind of figure it out. You go on over to literal and you look at the list type, you'll notice that it's in brackets, literal. Okay, so what does that mean? That means you can only produce a list of one item. It's just an inconvenient variable. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. What is the specification? And when, of course, when you look into the types, you'll see right here that you can produce a list with a type or a dict with a type. What did, what did, why, why are there malformed dicts? I never thought I would ever see a malformed dict, but here I am, 2024, almost 2025, and I can't stop saying, what is a one typed dict? What is a one typed dict? Is that like supposed to be a set? That's not a dict! Dog, what is, what is that? This specification is a lot like kind of buying off-brand cereal. You know, it has all the proper shapes and everything, but the moment you actually try it out, it's not the same. It hits differently, it does not feel good. So of course I did the only thing that I could possibly do. A, fix the list, boom. Also turns out you can only have positive integers. So fix the integers and look at that. What is that, is that a regex? Yeah, that's right. There's a regex in a parser. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you, you built the tokenizer and then you're using a Redux? Oh, no! Yo, dog, I heard you like parser, so I put a parser in your parser. This project clearly it has a lot of AI influence because the types and the setup is just, it just feels all crazy. But you know what? We got it fixed. I didn't fix the dicks, though. I don't think anything can fix that dick. That is one malformed dick. So I left that aside and I figured, okay, let's solve a problem using lists as my data structure. I know. Convenience, developer experience, all wrapped up into one data structure. List. All right, so the problem I decided to do was AABB collision with the point. All I want is an axis aligned bounding box and a point. Also, thank you for the sub. Appreciate that. Hey, Zippy. Thanks for that offline sub, Zippy. All I want is an axis aligned bounding box and a point. I'm simply gonna have something that takes in a list of height, width, and its X and Y position, and then it's something else that's just a list of X, Y position, and now I'm just gonna have to specify a bunch of examples and hope that it produces out the code that I wanted to produce. So here right here is my first attempt 
and here's the code that it produces. Now, just one quick look at it, we'll see that it produced a just exceptionally incorrect code, and I know right now I can hear them. I can hear them charging all the way in, starting to yell, getting all frothy at the mouth. The AI pruned maximalists are like, well, actually, you didn't give a... You didn't give enough prompting, okay? That's the problem is you didn't give enough examples. Your examples weren't good enough. I don't think you actually know what you're doing. See, the thing is, if you just understood prompting, you'd be able to prompt better, and clearly you don't understand prompting. Of course I don't! It's brand new language that I had to fix myself! So I'm going to give it more examples. And obviously a second clear problem with this approach is that there's no like check boxes where I can say how much and by what extent I wish to either... Uh, threaten self-harm, harm to the mother, or glaze the AI. So obviously, probably not going to get it correct. And does it even tell the AI not to hallucinate? Another really valuable strategy? <laughs> I don't even think it does. Anyways, gave a whole bunch more examples and got a new piece of code, which in fact still does not work. If you couldn't understand why this code was wrong, look at it. Input zero, let's call that X, and input one, let's call that Y. If input X is greater than any element within that element list and input two is less than or equal to the element adjacent to it, it's considered containing. Like that's crazy. Like how did they get that? How did it get this answer? At this point, I'm two hours into fixing bugs and producing absolutely nothing. So I just tried GPT, gave it a quick little English sentence, gave it the structure of my code, boom. One shot of the answers right out. You know, this project's kind of like cute. It's funny. Hey, it's a great way to learn how to write a parser. So if you, whoever wrote this actually ended up writing out the parser by hand and doing everything, it's a great experience really to learn and to become a better programmer. So hey, hats off to you. But at the end of the day, this always highlights the same thing for me, which is why do men avoid learning to code? What is this? Like, why are you doing this? Just learn to code. Just Learn how to just test if a point's in a box. Learn to write a return statement with a couple conditions. It's like not hard. You can go so much further if you don't have to rely on something else to think for you. I just don't understand it. And here, hear me out here. If these AIs were really that great, they're so great that they actually were AGI. They're able to learn. They're able to grow better. As Sam Altman once said, we're only a couple thousand days away from it. Bitch, that's like 10 years. Anyways, also, that's a crazy way to say that. Who who describes time windows in days? Like, oh, yeah, it's just, it's just like 3,600 days away. 10 years. You can just say 10 years and no one's upset at you, Samuel. It's strange. But anyways, but even if these companies do produce something that actually can really produce good code, you just got to understand something. Why would a company sell a product that can build anything? Why wouldn't they just harbor those trade secrets and build everything, right? Like, why would you sell the infinite intelligence tool? Think about it for a couple, it makes no sense. Like you would be able to compete with every product and start company after company after company after company over and over again. Having super AI would be the most valuable thing in the universe. So why ever would they just simply sell it? They wouldn't because they'd be able to make everything at the speed of like light, it'd be crazy. Let's just say that the AI companies do fumble the bag and accidentally sell the greatest product ever that can produce anything in a snap of the fingers with just a basic few text prompts. Let's say that does happen. You having hard skills is going to be absolutely incredible, right? Like learning how to be technical and talented and solve problems large on large scales will only help you. It will only make you better. It will only make you more valuable. And when that inevitable day comes, whether it's in 10 years or a thousand years, that AI can just do so much, your technical skills will still be valuable. Stop making the trade. It's not a trade. You don't have to make the trade. Like you really don't. You can just like learn and have fun and build stuff and become better at your craft. The name is the primogen.